Yo, what up, Algebra 1B? So today what we're going to do is we're going to keep going with systems. Uh, so, so far we've talked about how to solve systems by graphing. We've talked about how to solve systems using different types of substitution. What we're going to dive into for our very last chunk for this whole trimester, we're going to learn how to do systems by what's called elimination. And the first one of those is we're going to learn how to do them by adding or subtracting them from each other. So this elimination thing right here, Right? It's just a fancy way of saying that like this is a method we're going to use when both equations are in standard form, right? If they look like that ax plus by equals c up there. So if you've got two equations that look sort of like this, where the variables are all together on the same side, elimination is going to be a pretty good method to use. Right? And so we have some steps here, right? And it might seem a little bit intimidating where it's like, oh my god, there's so much stuff to worry about. So there's really only a couple things. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have we're going to look at the coefficients, right? So I've still got that little highlighted equation up there. The coefficients are a and b, right? They're just whatever numbers are in front of your x and y or your p and q or whatever your variables are. And we're going to say are any of them opposites? I mean we're talking about opposites, right? If a was three and then the other a in the other equation was negative three, then those would be opposites from each other. So we're going to have a couple of options, right? If our answer is yes, some of them are opposites, then all we do is we add the equations together. Right? We'll take a look at what that looks like and how it actually helps us solve. If they're not the same, bum, bum, ba, dum, right? oh gosh, that's really dark. Right? We're going to look again. We're going to say, are any of them the same? Right? If they are the same, then we can just go ahead and we can subtract the equations from each other. And again, we'll take a look at what that looks like in just a bit. If they aren't opposites and they're also not the same, then we're going to need to multiply. And that's something that we're going to save for a little bit later this week. Right? We're not going to dive into it quite yet. We're just going to get the basics down. But I have good news. After we figure out whether we're adding or subtracting and we take care of that, these last three steps are the same as they were for substitution. Right? You solve for the first variable, right? You're going to have one kind of floating around. You just do out so algebra and solve it out. We then plug that answer back into one of the equations we started with. And then we solve for the second variable. Right? So it's, just, you know, those last three steps are all the same. It's just this big, long, scary looking first step that's a little bit different. All right, so let's, let's take a look at some. So actually, let's start with number two. Let's skip over number one for now. So what we want to do is we want to solve this system by elimination. So what I'm doing first is I'm taking a look at the coefficients, right? So my coefficients, I got a two and a three for the x's. And you might be noticing, wait a second, there's nothing in front of those y's. Well, how do you do? There's a little invisible one in front of each of those y's. Right? So what I'm doing is I'm saying, all right, are any of them opposites with each other? As I'm looking, yeah. These coefficients for y, one is a plus one and one is a minus one. Those are opposites from each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these equations together. Right? And the way that's going to look is going to seem a little scary. I'm going to put a big old bar underneath there, and I'm literally just adding them straight down. So 2x plus 3x, right, just taking care of this piece there, is going to give me 5x. If I had 1y on the top, and then I'm adding a negative 1y down on the bottom, Right? That's going to come out as no y's. Right? The y's just kind of disappear, which is what we're hoping for. Right? That's why it's called elimination. We have eliminated the y's. Over on the other side, we got 9 plus 16 is 25. Whoa, look at that. Just 5x equals 25. That's not so bad. If we divide both sides by 5, we're going to find that x is just 5. Cool. That's like half the problem done right there. Right, we found out what one of the variables was. We still do need to make sure to go back and plug it into one of those original equations. Right? So we can kind of get rid of the highlighting and all that stuff. So again, there might be one that looks a little bit easier than the other one to plug stuff into. I'm going to choose the top one because it's got smaller numbers and it also doesn't have any subtraction. Right? You can plug it into the bottom one, you should get the same thing. So that top one, 2x plus y equals 9. Well, I now know that x is 5. So I'm going to plug that in for where I had an x. 2 times 5 is 10, to simplify that further a little bit. And then I'm just trying to get that y by itself. So I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. 
And so when I do that, that other side, 9 minus 10, is going to come out as negative 1. Right. Cool. Hopefully it doesn't seem so bad, right? So like I was saying, the only real difference between you know what we're doing now and what we were doing last week with substitution is just that first step, right? Trying to figure out, like, all right, am I adding these? Am I subtracting these? What does that even mean? All right? But once I get there, let's just solve it out for one variable, plug it back in, solve for the second one. Okay. Let's take a look at a couple more of these. So something like number three here, right? Again, I'm going to start by taking a look at the coefficients. I got a negative four and a positive four, and I have a negative two and a positive eight. So what I'm noticing is that the negative four and the positive four, those are opposites. So again, I'm going to add these equations together. And again, I'm literally just adding them straight down, right? If I had negative four plus four, that's going to come out as zero, zero x's. We have eliminated the x's, so that's good. For the y's, we got negative two plus eight. That's going to bring me up to positive six y's. Over on the other side, this can get a little bit tricky. This is negative 12 plus a negative 24. All right, so if I wrote that out a little bit to the side, it's negative 12 plus negative 24. That's still subtraction going on. Right, so what we're going to end up with is that's actually going to be negative 36. Right. If you need to use a calculator just to like super double check yourself on these, right? type it in just like this, right? Negative 12 plus negative 24, and it should give you negative 36 just like I got. Okay. Not a bad thing to do to check yourself. right? Sometimes, especially as we're getting closer to summer, your brain kind of shuts off a little bit. Right. But anyway, so we've got 6y equals negative 36. We can divide everything by 6 to get rid of that coefficient. Get that y is equal to negative 6. Not too shabby. What I then got to do is I still have to plug it back into one of those original equations. Right? So again, I'm going to just kind of get rid of the highlighting. And neither one of these looks particularly great, to be honest. Let's go ahead. Let's plug it into the second one. 4x plus 8y equals negative 24. Right, that one seems a little bit better because it doesn't have as many negatives floating around. Well, I know that that y is negative 6. So I'm going to plug that in for where I had a y. After that, I'm just going ahead and I'm simplifying. Right? 8 times negative 6 is negative 48. I need to get the x's all by themselves. So I'm going to move that 48 over to the other side by adding it. We're going to get that 4x is equal to positive 24. we got one last tiny little thing to do. we got to get rid of that 4 in front of the x. So what I'm going to do that is I'm going to divide. We get that x equals 6. All right. So I will say, you know, hopefully, like this piece right here that I've circled over <laughs> really messily, doesn't really seem so bad, right? Like once you figure out whether you're adding or subtracting, it's real quick to get that first variable. A lot of our work has kind of shifted into this second piece over here where we're finding the second variable, right? Sometimes the equations can take a little bit longer to solve, right? So there is a little bit more work on the tail end of things than there was on the front based on, you know, what we were doing with substitution. Right. Let's take a look at another one. Alrighty, so what have we got here? So we got 5x plus 17y equals 1 and 5x plus 8y equals negative 26. So again, I'm taking a look at the coefficients. I got some 5s. I got a positive 17 and a positive 8. So as I'm looking through these, none of them are opposites. Right? None of these are going to like cancel each other out. However, I do notice that these 5s are the same. Right? So this is our first one where we're actually going to subtract the equations in order to move forward with it. Right? So when we're subtracting, you know, we can kind of set it up start in the same way. Right? Big bar, subtraction sign. And it's important to know that we are subtracting the bottom one from the top one. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this, right? One way that I like to do it that kind of helps me keep my head in line, right, is I like to go in and I like to change the signs to their opposites, right? Because if I'm subtracting, I'm doing like the opposite thing of what they look like, right? So that's going to be minus 5x. I'm going to subtract that 8y and I'm going to add 26, right? So you're welcome to do it that way if you'd like. Another way that I've seen people do it is put parentheses around that bottom one, like with the subtraction on the outside, and then just remind yourself. Right? So let's let's talk through this first step, right? 
I have 5x on the top, and then I'm going to subtract 5x. And so talking it out like that can sometimes be helpful if you like to do it that way. Either way, what we're going to find here is that those x's cancel each other out. Right? The x's are gone. For the y's, we had 17. We're subtracting 8. So I'm left with 9y. On the tail end there, right, we got 1 minus negative 26. Well, if you have 1 minus negative 26, that's just going to turn into one big plus sign. So that's 1 plus 26 is 27. Okay. Makes this next step nice and easy. You divide everything by 9 to get that y by itself. You get that y is just 3. Sweet. Right. After that, we got to go ahead and plug it back into one of those original equations. So something I do want to mention is if you like the method that I also like, where you know change all the signs to their opposites, make sure that you switch them back to the regular ones, right? Switch them back to like, oh, cool, just this, right? When you're plugging it in, if you choose that equation. Right? Anyway, I'm going to get rid of the highlighting just to see them a little bit more clearly. I'm going to choose the top one because it doesn't have as much negative going on. So that's 5x plus 17y equals 1. Well, that y is 3. So this is 5x plus 17 times 3 equals 1. And if my math brain serves me right, 17 times 3 should give me 51. And then we're just moving some stuff around, right? I'm going to move that 51 over to the other side, make it so I can start getting those x's by themselves. So that's going to be 5x equals negative 50. Chop everything by 5. What we're going to get is that x is equal to negative 10. Okay. So that's really it, right? Again, there's a little bit more work on this tail end with what we're doing to find the second variable. And sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to figure out the first step, whether you're adding or subtracting. But at the end of the day, it's all sort of similar to what we were doing with substitution once you get that first step done. Okay. Oh boy, this one looks like lots of fun. So again, starting off, taking a look at my coefficients. I've got a negative, some negative threes, I got a plus two, and I got a plus five. So none of them are opposites. All right, so let's get that out of the way. However, these negative threes are the same thing. All right, so again, that means that we are going to subtract these equations from each other. All right. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to do it the, the other way I was mentioning, right? On this last one, we just kind of put parentheses around it and remembered to like say it out loud as we were subtracting. I'm going to kind of run through this one by changing the signs to their opposites. So I'm changing that to a plus 3. This is now a minus 5, and that is a plus 14. All right. When I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pretend like, all right, I took care of the subtraction out there. Now I'm just smushing them together as they look. So that negative 3x plus 3x now is going to cancel out, right? We've eliminated the x's. For the y's, we had 2, and now we're subtracting 5. It's going to bring us down to negative 3 y's. As for the other side there, right, negative 11 plus 14 is going to bring me back up to positive 3. Last but not least, divide by negative 3 there, so we can get that y all by itself. We get the y is negative 1. Okay, cool. So that part's all set. Now I need to go ahead and I need to plug this back in and figure out what x is. All right. Let's just go with the top equation. That way I don't have to worry about, you know, oh, I need to get rid of those signs I changed. And oh, gosh, I forgot. You know, let's choose the top one. So it's negative 3x plus 2y equals negative 11. Well, that y is negative 1. All right. And then from there, just like on the last couple, it's just simplifying, right? 2 times that negative 1 brings that to be negative 2. I then have to move that 2 over to the other side, so I'm going to add it to get rid of it. We get that negative 3x equals negative 9. Then we divide both sides by negative 3, get that x all by itself, and x is positive 3. I'm really hoping that this, these don't seem too bad, right? If you're if you're at any point during this and you're like, oh my god, I have no idea what's going on, right? Email your teacher, right? Whether that be me or whoever you got, right? We're here to help you out, right? We're not we're not super scary, I promise. All right. We got one last one we're going to talk about, and right? so we're going to talk a little bit about this one word problem. 
it. So we've got a resort hotel. Oh my gosh, we're going on vacation after all this is over. Offers two different weekend packages. So plan A gives you three nights and six meals for $564. Plan B is going to give you three, no three nights and two meals for $488. Bucks. It sounds like with plan B you're going to go out on the town a little bit more and find some like little hole-in-the-wall restaurants. But anyway, at those rates, we want to figure out the cost of one night's lodging and the average meal cost. Right? So what we're going to do is let's set up some variables so we can talk about the cost of one night's lodging. Oops. Let's highlight instead of cross it out. Cost of one night's lodging. We want to figure out the average meal cost. So for one night's lodging, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use N. N for nights. For average meal cost, I'm going to use M for meals. What that allows us to do when we set it up with variables is we can make a system of equations to represent this, this scenario that we've got. So plan A is giving you three nights, right? So three times however much one night is going to be. And it's also going to give you six meals. Right? And altogether, those are going to be $564. Right? And because we're like totaling things up, what we're going to do is we're going to add those together. So 3n plus 6m equals 564. If you haven't yet, pause for a second, see if you can figure out what the other one's going to be. For plan B, it gives you three nights, so 3n again, and two meals this time. It's going to give you $488 for that deal. Right, that's not so bad. Right. So what we've got here is now we've got our system all set up to go. You might notice that both of these equations are in standard form, right? They've got all their variables on the same side of the equal sign together. So I'm going to take a look at the coefficients, right? I've got a 3 and a positive 6, another positive 3, and a positive 2 for my coefficients. So I don't see any that are opposites from each other, but I do see that these 3s are the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract these equations from each other. Right? So again, either way that you like to do it, right? sometimes people like this way a lot better. I'm going to take that 3n on the top, and I'm subtracting the 3n on the bottom. The n's are gone, right? We've eliminated those. As for the m's, we had 6, and then we're subtracting 2. So now we're down to 4 m's. For the other part, we had 564 minus 488. And that's going to leave us with 76. Right, so 4m equals 76 is where we're at. We've got to divide both sides by 4 to figure out that meal cost. 76 divided by 4 is going to give us 19. Right, and since it's a word problem, we should probably put some sort of unit on there, right? It's $19 per meal is really what we've got. But we're not done yet. Right, we still got to figure out how much it's going to cost for each night that we're staying. And right, so again, you can plug it into either equation. I'm going to plug it into the second one because the numbers are a little bit smaller. All right, so we've got that's 3n plus 2m equals 488. Well, I know that that m is 19. So I'm plugging that in there. And then again, I'm just simplifying this. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this because I don't know how small it's going to be on your screen. All right, so we've got 3n plus 38 equals 488. We're going to move that 38 over to the other side by subtracting it. So now 3n is equal to 450. And then to get that n by itself, I just need to divide everything by 3. And n is equal to $150 per night. Right. So... I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes the, these uh, elimination word problems can be a little bit easier to set up than the substitution ones might have been, right? Where we were talking about the old man and his coins or like the farmer buying land. Right? So, you know, once we get a system all set up, it's pretty much the same deal the whole way around. Right? So that's the end of this one. Be sure to check back in Google Classroom for any additional assignments and or resources. Reach out to your teacher if you need help. We are here to help. Especially as we're ticking down towards the end. Alright, I'm out of here. I'll see you next time.